I'm Andrea and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a night sky using watercolour and masking fluid as a resist. Uh, masking fluid is a thick liquid, um, it's often white, mine's got a little bit of a blue-green tinge to it which helps it to show up a little bit better when you're actually putting it down on the paper and will hopefully help you to see it today. Uh, first thing to do with your bottle is to give it a good shake to get everything inside mixed up and when you're applying it you're going to want to use an old brush. It can be pretty thick and will clog up your bristles, so don't let it near your nice art equipment. I'm using uh, 300 GSM watercolour paper. I've already drawn a circle. And now I'm using my old brush just to add some dots uh, where I want the Milky Way to be. Um, I'm grouping them together uh, because I want it to look like a galaxy. Um, I'm going to have a thick swish going through the middle and then I'll pop some outlying stars on the outside as well. Okay, the next thing I want to do is to add um, an area of interest in my artwork. So, you could have the sails of a boat, um, you could maybe have the, the shape of a lighthouse shining out. Um, I think I'm going to go with that today. So, I've got a big space here, which um, would be quite interesting for something different in my composition. I'm just drawing freehand, but if you prefer to do a light outline in pencil, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And what I quite often find is when I remove the masking fluid at the end, if you've been gentle and you've used a soft pencil, a 2B, 3B, then it will actually take a lot of the pencil lines off with it. Um, I'm also going to add a little bit of a top of a headland, which will end up looking as if I've got some reflections um, from the light of the lighthouse. I want um, a little bit of reflection in the water as well, so I'm just going to create some very thin, fine lines in the direction I want my waves to be from. And again, this will look in the end as if I've got my light from the lighthouse reflecting out over the sea. The next step is the wash, so I am going to get water on the biggest brush I've got, um, nice and clean, and I'm going to paint it all over my sky. I'm letting the wash dry just a little bit so it becomes a, a sheen on the paper, but my paper's not saturated. In the meantime, I'm prepping my watercolours. I'm keeping the colours pretty thick. Um, I don't want it to get too diluted. And I'm mixing a good quantity so I don't run out halfway through the wash, which can then lead to things drying and being inconvenient. I've got some indigo, ultramarine, cobalt blue, viridian, and I think helio purple, and a little bit of magenta as well. And I'll probably mix up a few darker purples using my blues just to add in a minute. Okay, it's had a little bit of drying time. I'm going to start off painting the, apply the colours in the middle. I'm going to pull some of my magenta through. Again, I'm using a nice big thick brush. And this doesn't need to be this big, but the biggest you've got. Some of my purple. And you see the colours kind of smudge into each other. Just kind of letting them do their own thing. If something's getting too out of control, then I can get it back in with my brush. And I can just pick it up. So you can't see, I've just got a bit of kitchen paper here, so I'm just mopping my brush up in between layers. I'm going to 
bring a bit of indigo into the water. At the moment I'm not too worried about the shading. Uh, this is a base wash so I'll be coming back in a minute with some different layers of colour and uh, darkening things up a little bit as well. Uh, on the same note, it doesn't matter too much if I lose my horizon. I'm going to try and get the headland uh, just a little bit darker, a little bit more punch to it, and I think I can use some magenta to uh, bring a little bit of reflection in as well from the sky, and just to repeat and focus some of those colours. Uh, you see me keep w wiping my brush off. Uh, what I don't want to do is to introduce too much water, so if each time I give it a, a, a rinse in my clean water pot, I'm just dabbing off the excess as well. Giving the picture a few minutes to dry off a little bit. Um, you can see there's still some damp patches. One of the things that you will notice with watercolour is as it dries, it's, it does get a lot lighter. So I've got the pink through the middle still looking really nice, but I want to bring back the dark darks around the outside and in the water that's going to give the night feel to the image. So I've mixed up a bit more indigo. Um, this is a little stronger and I'm going to start painting back in um, using a thinner brush. And you can see around the outside where I'm painting, I'm getting a bit of a tide line. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm drying my brush off with my ratty paper towel, and I'm just going to gently, with my dry brush, just go in and just play with those edges a little bit. Try and create a bit more of a gradient. flowering going on here in the water, that's that thick line which leaves a bit of residual pigment. So if I wipe over the edges of it, oops, trying not to smat. That'll erode it a little bit. I want to keep a bit of that reflection. Soften those edges. And I'm just going back in again with a little bit more bright dark indigo to add a little bit more depth around the outside and into the headland as well. And just a little bit of gentle indigo to bring back the horizon. Um, scenes tend to be lighter towards the horizon, so I'm not going to add too much in the middle. And I can start bringing in some of my other colours here as well. Don't want to totally lose that pink, but just... Hold up the layers a bit. Okay, here we go. I've given it about half an hour to dry. Um, I'm just very gently using a light bit of colour to emphasise that horizon just slightly. Doesn't need to be dark, just suggest it's there. Um, and I used a bit more indigo just to add a bit more depth to that headland. 
I really, really wanted it to stand out. Um, the paint's dry now, so I'm working wet on dry. And I'm just going to use my fingers to gently rub off all of the masking fluid. Now I'm just going to use a damp brush to soften up the edges of the headland a little bit. Uh, the masking tape tends to, masking fluid tends to be a very, very hard edge. So I'm just brushing over the colour that's there already just to soften it up a little bit. Next, I've just mixed a little bit of burnt umber with my indigo, and I'm just going to use it to highlight um, the parts of the lighthouse that I want to have in shadow. I'll leave the light pure white, and then just to give a bit of gradient, if I go back down to the bottom just with a little bit more, um, it will smudge itself in and just give a little bit of depth and shading again. For my finishing touches, I'm going to take my gel pen. This is a Mitsubishi Uniball. Uh, I really like this brand. They tend to sit really nicely on top of the paper instead of getting absorbed and fading into it. And I'm just going to start off just by adding a few fine lines to the edge of each wave, which will give it a little bit more depth, more movement and reflection. Then I'm going to take my gel pen and just um, Add some dots up in the sky for stars. Um, I'm keeping them small to give a sense of depth, that feeling of forever, but uh, if you didn't have masking fluid, then you could use it for your larger stars as well. Social media.